So what I'm going to tell you is that genius comes from gaming. And, um, well, I'm going to take you to. Um, there are some, uh, some um, uh, well, logos inside. Don't be shaken or anything, I'm not sponsored. But I always do this to honor the collaborations we do in the AMC. Um, just out of curi curiosity, what do you think was the most cited tweet of the AMC this year? Anyone has an idea? Almost. Almost. It was about Pokemon. And you know, we are a very big academic center. We, we are proud of ourselves and we say uh, we are the best academic center. We are the AX from, uh, from uh, med, med school. And it was about Pokemon. Um, and why is it that people are so intrigued by games or by playing? Um, well, Einstein already said it, games are the most, elevate, uh, most elevated form of investigation. When you play, you explore. You don't have to teach animals to play. You don't have to teach children to play. We all play, I play. If I sh show this slide to students, um, I ask them, what's your reference? Does anyone know this under, let's say, under 22? Play back the tape, that's right. If you show this to, to elementary school, they say it's to write a name on the white tag. They don't know you use the pencil to, to wind up your tape. So it's all about reference. Um, well, we have two generations in here. Generation Y, which is you, I suppose. Um, you are uh, used to rapid communication, to peer orientation, you're hardworking, you want instant gratification, you want it now, and you need a stimulating work environment. You're not afraid of technology, and you're less in need of guideline, guidelines than my generation is. And we have um, been raised to choose security over opportunity, to have strong work ethics. A deal is a deal, you have to deliver, and you need work with guidelines and directions, and you are most often loyal to the employee. So basically, your generation is not mine. It's not bad, it's not good, just a little bit different. And students that I teach are simply no longer the people that the educational system was once designed for, at least not the ones I was trained with. So it's really hard if you have people trained in an old um, curriculum to get a message across to people who are born differently. They are just disconnected, which is the theme of today. So, how to convince someone who is actually classically trained? That's what it's all about. And if I start about serious gaming, they can follow that I'm a professor, although I'm female and I'm wearing jeans and stuff, and my mates uh, think I'm a little bit weird, but they can follow because I do the same type of surgery. Uh, but if I start about serious gaming, they go, uh, well, they tune out, basically. So I have to explain to them what is the difference. The difference between reality, virtual reality, and simulation. Well, reality is a representation that is close to what's in the real world. Virtual reality or simulation mimics reality at best way. And, and um, serious gaming, actually, I hope this works, yes, puts a layer over reality. So you give a different meaning to what's underneath, and you can play and toy around with it. But in the end, we have to get the same type of people if you talk about training medical residents. We need to have a competent professional. And you need to have people who have the same abilities as the ones who are classically trained. In fact, there's a guideline because my generation was raised with guidelines, um, that a surgeon must possess adequate level of knowledge, skills, and behavior in order to do the job. And how do you get to that level? Can we put up the sound, please? So, mal was anderes. Wir zeigen euch, wo der Hammer hängt. Ach so, und probiert es zu Hause nicht aus, das tut weh. Cool. So, dann will ich mal den Nagel auf den Kopf treffen. Da bin ich gespannt. Ja. 
Wahnsinn, ey, Wahnsinn, ich halte es nicht aus. Ich pack's nicht. Wahnsinn, super! Hammer hat. Und? Das ist äh, cool, hä? Klasse. Ja. I would, I would take someone like that uh, into training uh, in a heartbeat. So, um, you, it's about deliberate practice, by doing things repeatedly over and over and over again until you become that good. Now, how do you train surgeons, preferably not on patients? So, you have to give them something to get um, very good at. So, we gave them a simulator, because we were thinking simulators work. There's a virtual reality, you mimic the task you do in real life. So we gave them a simulator to, um, well, to grow their uh, psychodexterity. And we even made it obligated. And why? Because this is how we found the simulator back after four months. It was a very expensive thing. It was only used for 136 minutes in four months among 30 residents, which is nothing. And how is that possible? Because they, if you put them behind the thing, they say, oh, it's fun and it's nice to do. And, but they, they, they lack the innate ability to do it. So um, at that time, that was my PhD. And I was thinking, why is it so hard for people to do something which they know they will be getting better if they do it? So I was thinking, what, what, what's about being taught? Do we all like to be educated? We don't like to be educated. We like to. We like to find out, but we don't like to be educated. Most of us don't. I hate the word teaching and myself. So we have to unlearn teaching. Now, what's the power of play? <coughs> can, can someone get the, the common denominator in this, in this slide? Excitement. Yeah, emotion. It triggers emotions. You cannot play without, um, without facial expression which is a reflection of your emotions. So it triggers your emotions. And it triggers emotions in everybody, in old people, in young people, in people like you and I. So we have to get it uh, through the message to stealth learning, that's what I like to call it, to uh, make sure that people learn without them feeling being taught. And you have to get them in the flow zone, which is uh, the zone in which you learn optimally because you're uh, engaged. If it's too difficult, it's too anxious, you cannot learn. If it's not difficult enough, you get bored. So you have to get into that specific street. That's what we did. In fact, the better surgeon is a gamer. Um, they used the Nintendo Wii to warm us up. And um, so we played with the Nintendo Wii, and then we had to do um, describe tasks at the OR, and they were much, much better. And we, well, we, we went further on this, because in laparoscopic surgery you, you need dexterity. If you move, if you move the thing you, s you put into the abdomen to the right, in the abdomen it goes to the left and the other way around. So you have to go like, um, achteruit inparkeren to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to drive backwards <laughs> all the time, which is difficult. Um, so you can, you can teach that in a game. Let me see, or I got a lot of movies in only 18 minutes. Um, I'll show you a little portion. So get them home, right? So this is much more fun than being at uh, some, some kind of stupid simulator, simulator, but a Wii doesn't fit in your pocket. And as uh, always listen to your mother. Mine always said, use what you got. Well, it's, you can deliberate about how much you got, but use what you got. And you got an iPhone in your pocket or an Android or whatever. Um, so maybe you should start making fun in such a way. A short intermezzo. So does someone know what this is? Someone from Stockholm, maybe? No, fat, fat chance. Well, this is um, a street in Stockholm in which people drove too hard all the time. And uh, they put on fines and they put in police agents and nothing worked. So what they did, they did a contest 
and they put a pole there, and if you would drive the exact speed limit, you would get uh, a lottery ticket with a chance on 10% of the fines. Brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant, because no one drove too slow, and no one drove too hard. It's genius, right? So, um, it was awarded with lots of uh, awards, and the average speech was reduced by 22%. It's really smart thinking. Now, about smart thinking in the AMC, I go back again, people think they are smart. So what they do, they say, uh, well, people have to move more, because sitting is the new smoking, so you have to move more, that's why I do all the time this. And they put posters on the elevator. This is our old chief, Marcel Levy. Um, and they put a poster of Marcel Levy on the elevator, because they were thinking we would take the stairs. The crazy names, <laughs> really. So this is a good example for what does happen if you really think well about um, how to engage people into movement. It goes on and on. Um, if you want to try for yourself, there's one in Rotterdam now too. So, be, having said all this, um, does it make a difference? Because if you have to convince those grey old men, you have to show them evidence, because you have to think how they think. So, uh, in order to convince them. So you have to do your systematic research, um, and we do need more evidence. There's a lot of crap out there. Uh, and maybe there's good stuff out there which is not being employed the right way. So you, you have to do it right. So you have to do it in collaborations. This is one we did. It goes about surgical mastering. It um, goes about challenging your educator by getting higher scores and sharing. This is an example of um, actually the monitor we use in laparoscopic surgery. We just play a game that everyone likes, like this type of Candy Crush, which you cannot solve unless you know what's behind because the monitor in here is actually well, what's on the screen. So if the screen gets blurry, you need to know how to solve it and to check uh, whatever you did. You have to validate it, because validation is key. I mean, I, I can say it works, but uh, I can see, uh, say I'm a size 8, which I'm not. And so you need a, a mirror. <laughs> and um, you need to see if that really works, so that people who are surgeons indeed solve it better than people who just start out. Because otherwise, what are you doing? A surgeon should have better results if the game is valid. Um, also, the time to solution in surgeons is much, much uh, less interval. And by deliberate practice, you learn what you already said. And what was surprising, like the tweet that I started with, that it was actually the second most downloaded article on British Journal of Surgery. Now, British Journal of Surgery is like some kind of holy grail journal. So I was amazed that so many people were looking at it. Now, do you always need to build a game? No, you can also use the gaming principles. Now, you don't have to build a game, but you have to think like a game builder. So you have to hijack the brain. Um, you have to go from game to gamification. Now, you just saw the tower that we use in laparoscopic surgery, which is a terrible tower. You can get in a whole lot of mess if you don't understand the tower well. So actually what we did in training our residents with 
laparoscopic surgery, we said, um, okay, we're going to fuck up your tower. Um, and you have to find the fuck ups. Uh, and if you can find the fuck ups, you have to fuck up the other one's tower, which is crazy. A lot of fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> here he is again, eh? Wonderful, wonderful. Um, but what can we do this with e learning? It's much cheaper. E-learning is a PDF behind glass. That's how I like to call it. E-learning is no fun. It's just like a PDF behind glass. Sometimes I have to do e-learnings. For instance, this one on um, research citation, which I hated. I just I, I looked up all the answers. I didn't even study. And uh, that's how I got my certificate. <laughs> oh, this is on stage. <laughs> So good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we could do much better. So we did a 360 degree video game. Placing people in the AMC. Hope it works. To do resuscitation themselves. Uh, hope it works. I have to. Oh, let me see. Well, I'm over time anyway. You can, f you can find it on YouTube. But actually puts you in the AMC and you have to do resuscitation. It's great. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and you can download it for free. Okay. So, for free. Wonderful. <laughs> but what's in it for me? They say it's student stuff. What's in it for me? Um, well, you don't have to be disconnected, team of today. Uh, Pokemon, which I like, my level 30, is actually the most... Uh, <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you guys. I have to go through this. <laughs> Okay, okay, good posture. It's the most downloaded game, and it actually works. They, they, they ban Pokemons out of the AMC, they say they didn't. But um, it gets people connected. Actually, it made me work much more than I didn't. So if, you, if I have, have to go back to serious, can we use it in the operating room? Yes, we can. And how can we use it? By using solutions that are already out there. Like, for instance, if you see industry, that's why I had the disclosure at the beginning, um, they say, industry slogan, look at healthcare differently. And then they have a surgeon pointing at a monitor. If there's anything you shouldn't do as a surgeon, is pointing at a monitor. Because then you risk sterility, which is holy grail in surgery. You cannot be unsterile. So if I do this, this is not me, uh, you know, that does, doesn't work. So why not take a game controller? Much more fun. What you see me doing is that I'm actually wearing a game controller in order to operate the CT scan without hacking anything. It's just a remote mouse. How difficult can it be? Uh, but you don't need expensive stuff to, you know, to think about how you can make things better and how to use it on patients. For instance, if patients have broken their wrist, we have now started a clinical trial with this, and they actually start, um, they are anxious, how, can, how much can I move? How uh, We build this game in order for them to practice also with their relatives. Uh, and actually, we can monitor quite precisely uh, how the angles are. And it's a really nice environment, for, especially for children, to practice um, all the wrist movements again, and for us to collect the data on how well the wrist is doing after surgery. So, I'm at the end. 
So if you want to be a surgeon, or you want to be a professor, you must be, stay curious and play. Um, that's important, but you have to learn the rules of the game. You have to understand that people who train you are thinking differently, and then you have to play better than everyone else. So you have to play in a team. These are my PhD students. And this is someone I took as my plus one today. Um, he's a professional gamer, and he's going to hopefully start on a uh, top sports scenario in, in the AMC as an e-gamer, uh, because learning is so much more fun when you connect. Thank you.